Hi my loves! I hope everyone's doing so well today. Happy Pride Month to all my LGBTQ plus babies. Today I'm really excited because we're launching the first ever series on my channel in celebration of all the amazing and wonderful LGBTQ plus creators in the Minecraft space and it's called 30 Days of 30 Gays. So each day of this month I will be collaborating and highlighting a different LGBTQ plus creator in the community and uploading it here on my YouTube channel. And at the end of the month I'll be releasing a texture pack which you're gonna see featured in these videos but if you notice it looks a little scuffed right now, it's cause it's a little scuffed right now. It's still in progress, okay? <laughs> so don't worry about that. I'm so, so excited for you to see the series and to showcase so many wonderful people. And today we're kicking it off a few days late in true gay fashion and true Christina fashion with a solo Bed Wars commentary video just introducing you to my life as a queer person. So I hope you all enjoy and let's get into it. I think to really understand who I am as a queer person and my experiences, I need to take you back to the beginning of everything. I did not know it was possible for a woman to be interested in other women romantically until I heard the Katy Perry's I Kissed a Girl on the radio for the first time. It was 2009, I was in the car with my parents and I remember hearing this song and I was so confused in my brain, I tried to convince myself that, oh, this must be a man singing it who just like sounds very feminine like in the way that like Michael Jackson does. I distinctly remember asking my parents who was singing this and they were like Katy Perry and I was like isn't she a girl and they were like yeah and I was like but she's singing about like kissing another girl and they were like yeah and I just it like a light bulb went on in my head and I was like this is a possibility <laughs> Um, and from that moment on, my life changed. Worldview shattered and then rebuilt bigger and better and brighter than ever. And so although I like now, although I had this new understanding that it was possible for me as a woman to be interested in other women, I didn't really ever pursue anything. And that comes down to the fact that I have like really severe anxiety. I have had a couple of friendships where I've been so unbelievably close with a woman that people thought we were dating. And I, I, to my understanding, that's a pretty normal queer experience. Looking back on those friendships, I probably definitely was in love with those people. I mean, I have some photos that I'm like, this bitch was so in love with this other bitch, but she did not know. <laughs> um, I think it's just really funny. But now we're gonna take a bit of a time jump now. Senior year of high school. I had just graduated. Two of my closest guy friends are openly gay and my friend group, which is them and a few other girls, decide that we're gonna go to New York City Pride. This was my first ever Pride event. I was not out, but we went to Pride and I had the most amazing, amazing time. Here's little baby gay me who wasn't really convinced or sure of what her sexuality was, but knew that it wasn't straight and was in the closet, but wanted to go with her friends and have a really good time and did. And this is kind of a big catalyst for what happens next in the stages of my life. So I go to New York City Pride, have the most amazing time, and directly after this, I go to my college orientation. At college orientation, I end up meeting this girl who becomes my best friend at college, becomes my roommate, like, we are inseparable. And the day I met her, we sat down for like three hours straight just talking about life, feelings, opinions, everything. And she is the first person that I have vocally come out to as bisexual. Going to college orientation right after going to New York City Pride really opened my eyes to wanting to live authentically and free and as myself. And I was no longer in my small town. I was no longer surrounded by people who potentially were going to look down upon me for my sexuality. I no longer had this fear of people spreading rumors about me because I was going to a new place, new school. Nobody knew who I was. Nobody knew anything about me. So if I go in with the label as bisexual, then that means then that means that anybody who wants to be around me is gonna want to be around me because like not despite of my sexuality you know so that's what i did um except i never actually like said it out loud i never like made an announcement that i was bisexual to people at my college until my second semester i just kind of was living and pursuing and like attempting to meet people but it just was not working um it was really awkward there were a lot of people that i su assumed i was straight when i'm not my second semester of my first year of college, the movie Love, Simon was released in theaters. And my roommate and I went to see that. And I sobbed like a little baby, hysterically sobbing and said, wow, I want this. It was 2 a.m. in the Target parking lot, walking back to my car. 
and I was hysterically sobbing saying how much I wanted this, how much I wanted to be surrounded by people who were loving and supportive of me regardless of who I love. And that was so important to me because the next couple days I made phone calls to every single person in my family and came out to them. And then, <laughs> and then I took it a step further and I went and I got my second tattoo on my wrist and I made a public post to everybody that I knew coming out as bisexual. So it was no longer a secret whatsoever. I was fully out and I was fully proud. That summer I went to my first New York City Pride as an out and proud bisexual. I had the most amazing time. It was probably my favorite Pride that I've been to. It was so wonderful. And I went to Pride again the following year. Didn't go the last couple years because of COVID and stuff. So that's kind of my coming out journey story, I guess you could say. Um, but it's not over because at some point in the last year and a half, I've sort of realized that I don't always identify as a woman. I don't always feel this closeness and connectivity to womanhood. I've been experimenting with different pronouns. I feel as though the ones that best suit me right now are she, they. And the way I describe it is that some days I wake up and I just am a woman. I feel a woman, I look a woman, I am a woman. And there's other days where I wake up and that's not the case. I'm just not a woman. I'm not anything specific, just not a woman. It's kind of confusing trying to figure these things out and understand what they mean when you don't really have good knowledge about it yourself or are surrounded by a lot of people who experience these feelings as well. Um, for me personally, for me personally, I don't know a lot of people who um, are actively going through this stuff. It's kind of either people who just like have it figured out or just are, or cisgender. <laughs> so I've been playing around with, I've been playing around a lot with my pronouns and gender identity. And the last couple weeks, I've been playing around with my sexual orientation because, as I mentioned earlier, I think I might actually be a lesbian. Um, but I think for now I might start swaying away from bisexual and start swaying towards queer because it feels more of like an umbrella term. I don't know. I'm excited to see where it takes me. It's also a little scary trying to be this online creator who is using... <laughs> Um, it's also a bit scary when you're like an online figure person trying to figure these things out because I get really nervous that people are going to be judging me or if I like, if I come out as something and then a couple weeks or months later I'm like, wait, actually I think I'm this. I'm really nervous for that like backlash. It's really, it's really tough and challenging trying to figure out how to navigate identity in a public space like this. And I'm sure I'm not the only creator who feels this way. It's probably very common amongst people who are still questioning and figuring things out. But I don't know, I like to give people insight into what I'm thinking, feeling, and dealing with because I think that vulnerability is really powerful and that not enough people are sharing these bits of their life on the internet and in general. I think vulnerability is a really powerful thing and a lot of people are really scared of it, but I think there's something really special in trying to figure these things out publicly and openly with all of you. I think as much as it scares me, it's also really powerful and helpful for anybody who also might be going through these same things to feel not alone. I think it normalizes the ideas of being unsure about things or questioning who you are, who you love, questioning how you identify yourself, which there's nothing wrong with. I think, and and overall as much as it, overall as much as it scares me to do it publicly, I know that it's okay to do it publicly and that at the end of the day, the only thing that matters is how I feel about myself and who I'm attracted to and who I identify as. So yeah, that kind of, I guess, wraps up my story and identity. I am so unbelievably excited to share more pieces of my life and share the lives of all of these amazing LGBTQ plus creators with all of you this month here for Pride and also just in general outside of this. I hope you all have an amazing, amazing Pride month and comment who you wanna see me collaborate with below. Thank you all so much for watching. Make sure you stay gay, stay slay. Happy Pride, babies. I love you so much. I promise next game I will win. Bye.